Taven Bryan. The guy's moving on. Yelda Froholt went to Arizona. Okay. So good for Yelda, who I think showed some certainly as a guard last year, stepped into a very difficult situation playing center for the first time in the NFL, uh, but and more than held his own certainly as a guard. But, yeah, that, that one was there. The uh, I don't know if we're – are you trying to get into anything else going on around yeah, the you can do whatever here? you want. It's your, you're the franchise, brother. Uh, well, not apparently not. Um, <laughs> we talked yesterday about how – We did. The about Bengals – About how the Bengals – About a great many things. Great many things. How the Bengals – There was that show that was on before you get to the Bengals and the, the signing of Brown. There was a show that I watched uh, – uh, you know, you do one for the wife every once in a while. Yeah. I know you watch, end up watching The Bachelor – uh, so she wanted to watch a show called The Gilded Age, which was about oh, yeah. turn of the century Miss New York Kay City. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, I it, I found it I found it entertaining. It was fine. Okay. Um, but one of the things that that one of the women on that show would say is, "Well, there are a great many things." Yeah, great. I many just think things. it's great. It's a great, great expression. Great, yeah, it's, it's great many things. What annoys you today? Well, there are a great many there things that annoy me things. today. Yeah. No. Okay. Jokes. So as you were saying, yeah. uh, you so we sat here yesterday. Oh, yeah. And we're able to say significantly so, not even significantly, but notably so, that the Bengals were worse off than they were a year ago. That's right. And they were like. It was true. Oh, yeah? In the moment. Not true any longer. Hold our beers. Okay, hold our beers because we're going to bring in Orlando Brown on a four-year $64 million deal. And now it does make you wonder, is there a world that exists where they can have Orlando Brown? Mm-hmm. Joe Burrow, mm -hmm. Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins. For this year, there is. This year. For this I'm year, saying... there is. Because they don't – Higgins is – it's not till the end of next year. So, they have this year. This You're looking like down the, the line. Yeah. The big part of this Brown thing that's interesting, too, is the Bengals never give money in the second year guaranteed. But they did here. So, that's a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. down the road, it's going to be – I my guess is you'll see the Burrow deal done after the first of – uh, April, yeah, his extension mm -hmm. will be done. Um, and then now that Orlando Blount, Brown comes, in, it, I don't understand how they could keep Higgins. That feels like that seems impossible to me. But they will run it back with him right now. Well, they're going to have the, the big they're in a window though, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So they're in a window to do it. Uh, it's an enormous upgrade for them. I mean that Jonah Williams. For I'll give, they are really good at drafting everything since Duke Tobin's been there with the exception of offensive line. It's a blind spot. He's Billy Price, Jonah Williams. It just hasn't been able to, to hit on those, right. but he, he's hit on everything else. He's hit on corners and linebackers and quarterbacks and receivers and all of those things. But the, the one miss has been a little bit of a blind spot on the offensive line. So last year they were very aggressive on the offensive line. And then this year they were very aggressive. on the offensive Clearly. Line. I mean, yeah. that was, that was the one guy to go out and get, and they got him. So a huge, and, and if you're looking at it from their standpoint, they're taking a marquee player from the team that they have faced in the AFC yeah. championship two years in a row. And, not only is he not on that team anymore, he's now on their team. So, uh, yeah, pretty good move for them there. And that was that well, was one that certainly caught my eye. By the way, you mentioned the guys, Greg Newsom, yeah. as he is active on Twitter again. He's back, baby. Facts. Double exclamation <laughs> point on the JOK need a walk junior. There you go. Um, yeah, a lot of enthusiasm there. So Orlando Brown was offered more from Kansas City last year, played it out, and then did this deal with the Bengals. Yeah. Um, so that's, like that didn't necessarily work. It out. did not. If you can explain to me what Belichick is doing with the Patriots. Don't know. I don't know. So Juju gets 20 some million guaranteed on a three year, $33 million deal. Yeah. From what I can tell in the reading that I've, that I did on this last night and into this morning, he was bidding against himself. Bidded, he was bidding against himself. And I think that there are very few people very few people that would say at this point they would rather have Juju over Jacoby Myers, who got basically the same <laughs> right. deal and went yeah. to go to the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. I it's a it so that that was a wild one that, that happened yesterday. You mentioned Jamal Williams potentially. Um maybe he would be somebody in Cincinnati. Uh he goes to the Saints. Uh, as they have signed him. This, of course, after Montgomery signed with the Lions, so there was no reason to have Jamal Williams anymore, so they will have Montgomery and Swift. with the, I like that Lions team a lot. I think there's a – if if they can continue to progress. They, you they see what Cam Sutton said? Um, I, he's, I know he said yesterday that he wanted he just wants somewhere he's wanted or well, something that he effect. said that he's like, people want to play for Dan Campbell, man. People like that guy, man. They want to play for him. 
No, oh, he did the man man uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm doing that. Or you're doing that. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. the man. But you're he said that people stuff. want to play for Dan Campbell in the NFL. They are very excited about it. It's just like anything. Whether you're whether you're that guy and you're the rah rah man guy that he is and yeah. with their staff and you see that and you go, gosh, that looks great. Yeah. And if as long as you win, it is great. And the well, same it's... is true of the other other approach. Yeah. You can do that as long as you win. The the polar opposite of that approach. You can do that as long as you win. And then everybody buys into it too. So it just it just depends. But they I think they were they probably benefited a lot from hard knocks, from people seeing like how he operates. Yes. And being a fan of it. Um so uh the Panthers have agreed to terms with former Eagles running back Miles Sanders. So this is uh that is a done deal as well. Um and the Eagles have re-signed Fletcher Cox one year ten. Also Darius Slay. So how he did it again. He's able to keep a lot of the band together yeah but chauncey gardner johnson tweeted out with five about five minutes into our program that the disrespect is real with a bunch of exclamation points so maybe they won't be retaining his services i put nothing pat i mean I, it's always in play for them but it, it doesn't seem pleased at the moment no. certainly um should we go through where we are now is that scheduled at any point in this program well, we've got so. coming up we've got jay we got luminaries we got we got luminary to get to at uh you know, at the bottom of the hour. Yeah, and you got you got the voice. The voice. You got two. Tom. No, so yeah, let's do it. We got some time here. Okay. Before we get to wood. Okay. Uh, let's let's go through where we stand. What on... would you like to go through? Well, I'm gonna do it. Off, I, I'm gonna do it off the top of my head. Let's go. I know that you have it well within your grasp. Okay. As the senior uh, media correspondent, what do you see? What's your title? Vice president of being the dude who talks. Should be. Right. I actually I actually dropped my official title on uh, JW earlier today because I was like, do you do you know what my title is? And what he did, said no. And then I told him, and he goes, who came up with that? And give then it to dropped me. a name from the past, which was so apropos and yep. accurate. Nailed it. Senior. Okay. Media. Yep. Broadcaster. I mean, what kind of – what does that even <laughs> Why mean? Why do you need media before broadcaster? I don't know. You're the SMB. The SMB. The SMB. Yep. Yeah. Well, as an SMB, there's a B in that, which is a it big B. It should just be senior. It should just be a B. Big B. It should just be a capital Nathan B. Zagura with a giant B. Huge B. Next to it. Yeah. That's all that's needed. Um, all right. So let's just go through it's where not, we. though. Aware. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's just go through where we stand. Um, if, we're, if we're playing week one right now. Yep. Let's go defense because that's where I think the most change is. You've got Miles. Okay, Miles on one side, double O on the other. O two. 2 You've yep. got Dalvin Tomlinson in the middle. And then my guess, Jordan Elliott. Perry and Winfrey. Perry and Winfrey. Okay. Come on, Perry. And Come on. You got Perry. it in you, buddy. He's got it. In, there's no doubt he's, he's got, got it in him. him. He's got it. Got to do him. it. Dalvin might be great for him. Man. I think he will be great for him. Dalvin's great. story is kind of unbelievable. Yeah, uh, I don't know how many people know this, and we'll talk with him uh, about some of these things, perhaps not all of them, but at a 4.4 GPA in high school, was admitted to Harvard, chose instead to go to Alabama, Yeah, where he obviously Smart that business worked decision. out pretty well, Yeah, where he played on a defensive line that had Jonathan Allen, Jaron Reed, and Ashawn Robinson, yeah. and Dalvin Tomlinson. Um, he lost his father at the age of five. He mm. lost his mother before he graduated from high school. Yes. So he has overcome, overcome a lot. Man. He was yeah. a 2020 Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Giants. So this is a man of of tremendous consequence. He was a state wrestling champ. He has shot put records. He plays nine instruments. I mean, this is nine instruments. Nine instruments. shot put records. State wrestling champ. Harvard. Sheesh. And Sheesh. overcoming tremendous tragedy to do so. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. That's great. Resolve and and all. So he is a special guy. So I think that you that'll know, be fun. Hopefully, to your point, you know he is a guy that absolutely could could help a Perion, which yeah. would be great because the talent is is immense with Mr. Winfrey. All right, so we have the defensive line set. Okay. Uh, Jok and Phillips at linebacker in a nickel set. Your linebackers today, yeah, Jok, Phillips, Fields, Taki is kind of what you got there. Yeah. In a, Phillips in a, would probably get the first run. I mean, yes, yeah. he looks phenomenal. By the way, I see him every, oh, literally. Does. I just want him to stay healthy. Day. The guy is. Like a statue. I mean, he is unbel He's in unbelievable condition. He's got to stay healthy, though. Yeah. Yeah, but it probably, right. Yeah, and then the three now. corners are the three corners. Three corners are three corners. And then Delpit. Delpit and Thornhill. I mean, Thornhill. Pff, let's go. Giddy up. Yeah. Giddy up. Yeah, that is that is quite good. Yeah, and then on offense, it's literally, 
it is the offense. It's the offense from a year ago that everybody knows about. Yeah. So that's that is the you know wish list thing, and we've seen all sorts of reports uh, about you know people calling on the the Denver receivers, Jerry Judy, yeah. uh, Sutton as well. So um, you know, there's been reporting that we're involved in that. Who knows? Would love to be. Uh, it's just going to be about a matter of what the ask is and what the give up is willing to be. Yes. Um, but you know that the, the, the pursuit of, of those talents are being done at this point. Yeah. Mac Wilson, by the way, there have been talks about Mac Wilson. Uh, he is going back to the Patriots. They have resigned him. Um, Nicole Hardiman has answered the Juan Thornhill tweet saying, remember, we came in together in 2019. Come on over the dog pound with the eyeball emoji. Uh, I have you know, tried to get a little perspective there. I know that the, he fits what the Browns are looking for. Uh, we'll see if that ends up happening. We'll did Nicole, up happening. did he respond to it? He responded with the eyeball emojis to Juan Thornhill. Yeah. So I mean, he we'll would see. be, he would be what the doctor ordered. Yes. Um, you know, with that, with his abilities. So I, I think, yeah, that's what you're at the point now where I guess the reason I want to do that on the defensive side is, is you are, you, you now have a deep, you go play. Yeah, like, you go play. would I love to see Anthony Walker back? Yeah, for sure. Sure. And I'm not alone, obviously. People who play with him would love to have him back as well. So there's that part of it. Um, and then offensively, you, you roll out the same group now with Post-it coming back officially. You can roll out the same group. I think you and I are on record. A couple more weapons here or there. Sign us up. Yep. You know, that's the, that's the operation. Speaking of weapons, what a human. <sighs> One of the all-timers. The great, the great Anarella. One of the all yep timers so that's where you stand um and dalvin thomason will be joining us here in the two o'clock hour of the program that's where you are around the league real quickly before we uh get to the big luminary interview um the converse after we were done and you were able to take in everybody else with what everyone was saying about the afternoon on mcafee with rogers yeah it did theme finally by like the middle of the night people were like well wait a second he blew it <laughs> You blew it, boy. Yeah. As big and as could the, be. the Packers are like, okay, sweet. Yes, it finally got to the thing that was the most obvious part of that whole exchange. It took like the middle of the – it was like I'm watching basketball last night with the boys. Yeah. And I and it's like – I chopped on Twitter. I'm like, oh, people are finally – like you and I were talking about it as it was going on. Like what is he doing? Yes, correct. We were. What is he doing? This is – if I'm the Jets, I'm like, get out. Get this guy out, off of McAfee right now. Oh, it was the best thing they could have ever. That was a gift. Yeah. In his vengeance tour, which that was, it was a gift. And now the thing is, it's funny, is like, for example, you took his little shot at Schefter. Yeah. Well, you saw Schefter go on and say, well, I mean, now the Packers, you know, probably are going to want even more than before because of, you mentioned the leverage thing, but also because now, you know, as Aaron Rodgers said, he's, the best player to ever play for the Packers. Now, to be fair, and Rodgers did use the word debatably, the best player to ever play for the Packers. But I think now you're going to have like these reporters who are trying to get that narrative going. And and listen, if we know anything, and certainly we know it well. We know Jay. Jay. I miss seeing Jay I so know. much. Look at him. Look at the pleasure. Look at him. Guy. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Oh, there he's got, he is. Oh, he's he's got, got cameras. He's got. I love Jay. He's got internets. I don't Jay's know what he's guy. doing. my guy. I don't know. Uh, Ethernet cables. Well, it could, could be our guy. Uh yeah, He's, he'd be in our security detail. Jay, yeah, <laughs> clearly. Yeah, there's no Good doubt. Lord, yeah. he'd be a great, a great like if you're a, a boxer or whatever, and you came to the ring and Jay was like rolling up behind you, that'd be great. Yeah, other person was probably like, "What am I? It's over." I think I'll walk. I think yeah. I'll leave. Yeah, the next level. Do you know next. that he, yeah. he, you know that he, uh, he judges horse competitions. It doesn't surprise He's me. He's well versed. Does he know? I wonder if Donovan and Jay have ever crossed paths in the horse world as well as the Browns world. We'll have to ask the voice. Maybe you'll start when with he joins that. us. That could yeah. be your, your what's going on on the Ponderosa. I always got to know what's going on. There's um, a lot of rain out there. You got to be careful. Yeah. A lot of wet, wet turf. A lot of wet turf. Yeah, this is good. Big announcement coming, by the way. Next. Huge. Some would say. Some would. That's coming up next. Big L Luminary Interviews. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Ballybet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Cleveland Browns Daily brought to you by Bally Bet coming soon to Ohio. And what a treat, a luminary, the biggest of L's in studio with us right now. We have got the Browns partner and president of Haslam Sports Group, J.W. Johnson. J.W., great to see you, Good man. to see you, Nathan. How are you, buddy? I'm good. We're going to get into what's gone on the last few days in a second, but right. you're here for what we like to call a major announcement, and that is evolution is one of those things. It's part of humanity. It's part of life, and evolution is also part of the Browns, and, and we're launching a new, really evolved yeah. docu-series, aren't we? Yeah, really excited. Obviously, we've got a, had a great show that we've had since 2013 and building the Browns, you know, five-time Emmy Award-winning show. Uh, you know, really the first club, I think, in the NFL to really kind of create their own in-house hard knock style, full season access show that's been on our YouTube channel. It's great. Uh, it's been awesome, right? Yep. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a great, great show. But, you know, all good things kind of must come to an end or evolve. And so we're excited that we're going to um, retweak and retool building the Browns and call a new program called Unleashed. Uh, which will be out here soon. Uh, I think the trailer for the first episode's on our YouTube channel now, so please be sure to go check that out. And yeah, we're we're just excited about the new, the new program. So it's going to be Unleashed is the name of the show. It's kind of the evolution of building the Browns. And the truth is, right, we're not building. We're ready right. to go. Right. We are we are the Browns, and now it's time to go out there and win. Time to be unleashed. But it'll be the same type of all access show where you're yep. going to get to learn about the players, get to learn about the front office, and really get a peek behind the curtain with what the Browns are going to do. Yeah, Coach Stefanski has been pretty adamant that when we have the show called Building the Browns, he's like, the Browns have been built, so can we change the show? So I think <laughs> Kevin may have had a little bit of an influence I like that. on this. But yeah, totally agree. I mean, uh, we we feel like we're ready to compete and ready to compete now and excited about Unleashed. And I think the, you know, the first, first show will uh, we'll highlight um, Combine and kind of focus on uh, what we'd like to call our trailblazer. And, and Catherine's our you know, assistant GM and first female GM in the NFL, assistant GM in the NFL. And you know, really excited about people hearing her story and excited about her trajectory here with us and obviously throughout the league. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to her at the Combine. Unbelievably impressive. And right, she's one step away from... Yeah from real history. I mean, it's history that she's the first ever female assistant GM, but to be the first ever female GM, and it feels like a very realistic possibility, and she's here with us is pretty incredible. Yeah, she's great, done a really nice job, and great football acumen, and then, you know, just her demeanor and the way she kind of handles everything besides the player personnel stuff, and she, she's been great, and we're, we're just lucky to have her, and obviously Andrew and her had a relationship in Philly, and, and was great to bring her over here, so it's been good. I like that trailblazer. trailblazer. Pay attention to the scores there, yes, <laughs> when you go see the trailer out there. You mentioned the five Emmys. You think about Billing the Browns, it's been kind of the archive of, of modern Browns history, right? From the retirement of the Hoff, and now yeah. he's going into the Hall of Fame this year. The big win against the Steelers in the middle of the crazy COVID situation. Nick Chubb and Miles. Andrew Barry back from scout to the Eagles, back as the Browns GM. So it was, it was pretty cool. But it was long. And I think we're moving into an era where there is more consumption of maybe more shorter form content. Yep. And is that something that we should expect with Unleashed? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think Bill and the Browns was, you know, that normal almost 20 some odd minute, you know, kind of long form piece of content that we'd also be able to air on, you know, on, on ABC here locally. So, yeah, I think we're kind of going to shorten the length, you know, maybe eight to 12 minutes, give or take. Um, I think that's a little more consumable for sure. people. Sure. Uh, you know, everyone's busy, but the, the, the more... The shorter consumption, I think, is kind of with everybody's attention deficit disorder currently that's, <laughs> that's, right. that's going on because yes. of these phones uh, will be good. And I think we'll be able to get some more episodes out of that because it's, you know, those are our guys that, that in the production team that put this together. I think, you know, some of the best in the business, but takes up a lot of their time and they've got a lot of other things to focus on. So, yes, they do. I, I think uh, the shorter the, the show, the, the better for them and better for the for the viewers. All right. So for Unleashed, you can expect about eight episodes throughout the off season covering the tent pole events. You already mentioned the combine. That'll be the first one. Free agency, draft, training camp, profiling players, coaches, personnel, breaking news stories. So it's going to be timely. You're going to get those in-depth profiles. But I think it's going to also have a little bit of a different look and feel. I'm told it's going to be a little more energetic and, and people should really like yeah. what they get to see. Because listen, we need that energy. We got to get to September and get ready to go yeah. out there and win some games. Yeah. Exciting. It is exciting. So part of this, and we mentioned free agency there, and, and by the way, this begins March 21st on YouTube, the Browns website, the Browns app. That's YouTube.com slash Browns. So it's the end of a chapter, but the beginning of a new one with the Browns Unleashed. 
But we've got some new faces already. Last couple of days, Andrew yep. Barry's been busy. We know Dalvin Tomlinson is in the mix. I'm calling him Double O. Double O is in the mix as well. Uh, we brought back Ethan Posick, AJ Green. There's been talk about Sione Taki Taki, and hopefully we'll find out about that soon. And then last night, there are reports that the Browns and Juan Thornhill, the free safety of the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, that's right, two-time Super Bowl champion, could be making his way here as well. Kind of what was the overall approach to this portion and and kind of how has it played out for the Browns? Yeah, I think, you know, Andrew's done a great job so far. Obviously, we have to work within some of the constraints. You know, we have a lot of vets that are under contract, and obviously we're paying, the, you know, our quarterback with Deshaun, and, and rightfully so. Uh, but he's done a great job. We know what our, our needs were. You know, we really wanted to get another – pass rusher to help miles out yeah uh, we like oboe or double o i'm going to call him as well yeah. like that so uh you know high energy high motor relentless love his style i think you can see his trajectory and his pff grades throughout his career have continued to go up so we're excited about that and then you know bringing in a guy like dalvin to kind of shore up in the middle yeah, which we it's really a big man needed. big man um you know great pedigree played at alabama with the giants and recent with the vikings i've heard nothing but great things about him super smart obviously had an opportunity to go to harvard but did the right thing and chose to go to alabama <laughs> uh but no we're, we're excited and, and it's kind of played out the way we wanted to play out um still some things to do uh and i think you know one um will be a nice addition in the back end you know uh true free uh i think he and grant will play well together yeah. excited about his ability and then you know obviously he's been in places and knows how to win and i think that'll also help some of the young guys and bringing in people that kind of have that of know how to win and bit of places that, you know, have had big playoff runs or Super Bowl went rings, et cetera, would be good for the young young guys in the room. Yeah, and it also seems like a nice mix of a guy in Dalvin and, and Juan who are very established and then a, an ascending player in double O. You know, he finally got to start for the first time yep. in his career at the end of last season, five sacks in those last six games, including one against us, which I'm sure caught everybody's attention. <laughs> but that I, I, I kind of like that mix, and it felt like character and the type of guy because we interviewed uh, here on Brown daily earlier in the week somebody from minnesota and they were effusive in their praise for dalvin tomlinson not just the player but the, the, the guy yeah. so how important kind of was that in in getting this culture where you guys want it in the locker room yeah listen i think that's super important you want guys that are going to be high energy vocal leaders right i mean you want more leaders and i think coach schwartz will bring out a lot of those guys and you know um we have a young group right i mean we've had i think maybe the youngest roster in the league if not the yes. second youngest roster in the league currently yep uh you know so i think having like a guy like perry on and and alex wright and all these guys learning from you know dalvin and oboe and and miles and whoever else we, we end up bringing in here I, I think it'll be good for them and, and it'll push them and you know they're going to want to compete and i think that's what kevin preaches that we're going to compete every day of practice and continue to get better and i think these are nice additions for the club they're going to want to be Unleashed. <laughs> Unleashed. That's there right. it is. Add him to the show. Add him to the show. <laughs> Bring it all full circle there. All right. Before I let you go, because this is always fun, any uh, any any hints, any breaking news you want to give us? Anything we should be keeping our eyes peeled for here in the in the coming days? Yeah, uh, we'll see. We're not done yet. So I know Andrew's still working the phones and, and doing a few things. And we you know, I think everybody knows a couple of the, the pieces that we need to add. Uh, you know, obviously, I think we still need to kind of fill some stuff on the linebacker side. Could sure. we bring another person in to help on the on the front? Uh, and then, obviously, I know receiver is always a big thing that people oh, are talking yeah. about. Right. So, you know, may, maybe we'll get some news here in the next couple of days. But you know, everybody's so excited about free agency and the start of the league year. But uh, and they want it all right away. But things do take time, right? I mean, For sure. I think uh, you know, when, uh, I forget when the Amari deal was done, but it was late. You know, and things happen later and. Everybody wants this instant gratification, so patience. Patience, patience is a yeah. virtue. It yeah. is a process. It's a process. And by, you can't win games right now. So we'll take our time. Let's assemble this team that we want to unleash later this fall. Again, it is unleashed. That's what we're talking about, the evolution of building the Browns. It will debut March the 21st. Our trailer is out now for the first episode on YouTube.com slash Browns. And again, you'll be able to find Unleash on YouTube, the Browns website, and the Browns app. What an absolute treat we get. Oh, no, come on. Keep coming well, you with You did it. say pay attention to the scores. Oh, boy. So we do have something potentially. I know we have a lot of uniform. Ooh, junkies. Head, head yes. Yes. So See, I, that's why I went open-ended. Anything be, you want to tell us. Be on the lookout. There could be something on the horizon that will be new and different uh, for the 2023 season. Does it involve the color white? I can't say. But it could be. There could be white somewhere. I don't know. Could be white somewhere. We'll see what happens. Oh, 
baby. <laughs> and we'll be back with more Cleveland Browns Daily brought to you by Bally Bet right after this. Look, unleashed. Yeah, well, unleashed. easy. You easy. Don't hit that again. Delicate. Just very. Delicate. It's a flower. Just it is. very delicate. Hello. I think you're good now. All right, am I? There's a hum. There's definitely a am hum. Am I on? I don't hear a hum. You're on. Okay. But I think, yeah, there's definitely. Again, I wouldn't do that. I think this thing's holding on by a thread. I think. Yep. See, lost you. Hello? Now you're back. Yeah, now I'm back. Okay. Man, this thing is. One thing that's interesting about that, that I find interesting about that mic, is it's been problematic for, I don't know, about 18 months. Yep. And there's been nothing done to. And it's been, nothing's been done to. To fix that. It's just stayed, stayed the same. Uh, trying to get it in No, I, no, stop. 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 It's fire. Stop. Lear, seriously. Ooh, I know. That sounds good, though. Now it does. Don't touch. Don't move. There was blue, a blue little mini flame shot out of right here. Yeah, I don't like it. I think yeah, it's okay right now, though. Right as long there. as you don't touch it. Just try to keep your distance. Um, this will be a good shoulder workout. It would be. A lot of good scores there at the end. Oh, baby. A lot of good uh, scores at the end. What? You unleashed a lot of good scores at the end of that. What did you think like about it. What did you? How did you think I, I did there? I thought your enthusiasm was uh, appropriate for the man. So, yeah, I, I think it worked for everybody. I think that, that was great. That's exciting, man. It is exciting. Look, I the when I first – you know, started doing this show, one of the things I did in leading up to it was go back and watch all the old Building the Browns as a little idea of, of where you'd been. Because That's it, smart. I like your, your – it really was a documentary of yeah. – of for a decade of, of everything that went into it. That's right. So it was great. And, the, I mean, you think of Drew and uh, Connor and Jeff and those guys that are back there. Legends. The legends. Ricky. I mean, these guys – Shout out. Yeah, the nation – Oh, yeah. The nation in the mix, like these are the these are the Lily, best. Sweet the, Caroline, yeah, the Feel the best it. people you're going to find, and and they do hardworking. Oh gosh, hard the working. hours. You know, it's it's funny you, th you think about like something like Hard Knocks uh, and building the Browns and um, what you think Unleashed will be, and you see whether it's Unleashed going to be eight to twelve minutes. You know, building the Browns yep. was twenty. Hard Knocks is an hour. I mean, is it what is it one one hundredth? One one thousandth of the stuff gets on air. In that, I mean, the amount of stuff that the shot, cutting room floor is. Oh, 
get some hip boot waiters to get through there, buddy. It's you, deep. you Lots. know, you have no idea how much work goes in to get you 12 minutes or 20 minutes of content. The cutting room floor is what I, I would liken it to Scrooge McDuck's vault where you could just dive in and swim around in cutting room floor video. There's so much of it. Big Scrooge McDuck guy. Love that guy. How could you not? Yeah. No, I mean, it is. It's, so they did. They put in the work on that. I'm excited to see what they do with this one. Uh, they're the best in the business for a reason. Uh, as JW mentioned, they're the five-time Emmy Award winners. I mean, they, they crushed it. So they'll crush this too. And it's, uh, it's exciting to see, so, to see where all of that goes and exciting for the scores at the end with white. Could it be? I mean, he didn't say it was a white, but it felt like white. It was said. I said it. You did. Yeah. yeah. By you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. So we'll, we'll see where all of that goes. Um, it, I'll tell you one thing from the, uh, from an, an NFL perspective today has been quiet, very little next to nothing in terms of free agency. Uh, we had a lot of work that we got done last night at the end of the night yep. and a lot of work that's already been done in terms of reshaping this roster. Uh, the voice will join us next on yes. Those topics, among others, we'll check in and see how things are going for him out at the Ponderosa. You have that to look forward to, which is nice. Second hour of Cleveland Browns Daily coming up next right here on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
second hour here. Dalvin Tomlinson going to join us in about 20 minutes. Uh, when a medical mistake causes you injury, call the medical malpractice attorneys at 100 Elk, Ohio. Elk and Elk's proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. And we have that on the Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea Hotline official sponsor of your Cleveland Browns for a visit with our great friend, the voice of the Cleveland Browns, the great <laughs> Jim Donovan joining us. Uh, we start where we always do on the Ponderosa. Uh, we had some cold weather. We've got slippery conditions. How are we doing out there, buddy? Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, Bo, uh, it has been a winter of major decisions because of these temperature fluctuations. Yeah. Yeah. So do you blanket the horse? Sure. Do you pull the blanket off? Do you take it? Do you close the barn doors at night? Listen, guys, I know these coaches have major decisions to make <laughs> on Sunday afternoon. Critical, critical calls on fourth down. Yeah. It can't be always as easy as just bringing in Jacoby Brissett and letting him sneak it. But I would ask those guys to walk a mile in my boots and what I have gone through this winter, and then we'll sit down and exchange stories. Jim, have you considered hiring an analytics department so that you could have a handy-dandy one-pager that says, you know, green, yeah, blankets, they're off, or yellow, oh, well, it could go either way, or red, no, blankets must stay. I think you're onto something, Nathan. I really do. I think that there is a whole new avenue of equine care uh, yeah. if we do it that way. You're right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Hey, Jim, it's been a busy couple of days. Um, and we, Nathan and I were kind of going through the roster and uh, Tomlinson, among others, uh, kind of getting in. And now mm-hmm. it feels like I know that there's still other things out there. We're hoping for Anthony Walker and uh, we'll be able to be resigned and, and certainly a receiver. But you could now go out there and play football. They had a lot they had to do on the defensive line. What do you make of the moves that Andrew Barry hit, uh, made here early on in, in free agency? Well, I think that they were exactly where they had to go, and I don't think that that was a big mystery. I mean, I think everybody that watched them play last season and came out of that season and said, okay, what needs to be fixed? Um, You had to go inside to that defensive line, which, let's face it, was a worry going into the season last year. I mean, Mm -hmm. was it going to be able to hold up? And and so I think, you know, we had our answer at the end of the year, and I think then they tactically uh, went after the people that can help them do that. Because I think when you analyze and go inside the body of the losses last year, and I know that there were these catastrophic plays at times, you know, the 75-yard pass uncovered against the Jets and other big plays in the secondary. But in the body of those games, it was really the inability to control the run. Example, the Chargers came into town (laughs) and played the Browns, and coming into that game, they were like at the bottom of the heap in the in rushing yes, they were. per game coming in to play the Browns. Yeah, they were right at the bottom, which was, you know, astounding. But as that afternoon went along, I mean, they could not control Eckler or whoever else touched the ball. And if you really talk about the three losses against the teams in our division, uh, when we lost to those teams, in each one of those games, Baltimore really ran it at us over in Baltimore. Mixon really ran it well with a little help from Pirine down at Cincinnati. Yep. Because remember, Joe Burrow didn't have receivers on that particular day. And Najee Harris was really dominant in the game against us over at Heinz Field. And, you know, and then I'll throw in the Atlanta game, which was, which was basically all runs. So, I mean, the inability to, to control that run has to be rectified. And so I think, you know, that's what they did, and, and they're on the road to doing that. Yeah, that's how you get a 325-pounder in there. You're right, Jim, to just kind of add to what you were saying about the Chargers game. That was week five. The Chargers ran for more yards in that game against the Browns than they entered that game with after four games on the season. So, yes, that was – Yeah, I I can – you know, I can really remember that, Nathan. Coming into the game, I was just shocked at where they were. It was like 40 yards a game. You know, coming into the game, and then I was more – yeah, then I was more shocked as the game went along as to what they were doing. No doubt. So you get that guy, you get Dalvin Tomlinson, somebody that can be a big player, good against the run, but also pushes the pocket well, which helps our guys on the edge and right. Miles Garrett. And, and he's apparently going to wear number seven, I'm seeing, in Okorong- I like Okoronkwu. I can't say it. 007. Now he's 007. That's easy for me. I'm calling him 007 <laughs> Oboe. Uh, a guy who was an ascending player, what do you think about kind of that fit? Somebody, you know, five sacks in the last six games last year. Well, first of all, on the name topic, um, you know, it's, it's guys with these names. 
they really drove Doug Deacon into retirement. I mean, really, that's what did it. You know, the, <laughs> I, mean, no yeah, I remember the famous I remember the famous tight end, Michael Hoho Manawanui. And Doug said on this afternoon, we'll just call him Big Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. <laughs> Listen, I I'm think, following yeah, in his footsteps. 007, it. easy. 007, I yeah. love that. 007 is great. Yeah. I like that, man. I gotta tell you, that that's pretty sharp. Uh, you know, looks like a real speed guy, Nathan. Yep. Uh, a guy that really timed timed his year well, right? I mean, he had a great last six games yep. of the season, and then went into free agency. He had the five sacks, I think, in the last six games. He had one against us, so. Um, you know, a welcome addition, interesting piece of the puzzle. When I notice, you know, once again, with, with what Andrew is doing, the ages of these players all seem to be in that same 27, 26, 27 year old range that, uh, you know, you really have players that still basically have a lot left in the tank. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, and I, you know, ascending. Yeah, that's that's certainly the hope here. You know, Jim, the other thing that Nathan and I have, have hit on a lot, and I I think sometimes it was, we, we you know you think about some of the stuff going around around the fan base, and uh, we'll go get Jesse Bates, we'll mm-hmm. go get the, you know, it's like none of that was ever going to be in play, um, because we're we're right. already paying a, a a bunch of our very best players, so you you were going to get these ancillary guys, and hopefully you find some diamonds in the rough, get some ascending guys, um, but this very much is an off season. I Nathan and I talk about this all the time. It's, a, it's an offseason with, I think, a, a tremendous amount of, like, first of all, excitement to get going, but also pressure. Like, it's time to go. Uh, it, it's time for our best yeah. players to be the players they're being paid to be. And so it's almost like whatever happens between now and September, this isn't the best radio, but it's probably the truth. Let's just see it in September, right? And you can feel that pressure kind of in the building. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, there is that category, are you a now team? And they are definitely a now team. And I think they would tell you we have been a now team since we put ourselves in the playoffs a couple of years ago, and we have stubbed our toe for whatever reason, different reasons, uh, the last couple of years. Um, That window can close on you very quickly if you don't gravitate towards it and and keep it open. And by keeping it open, you keep adding to your roster and you, you know, keep trying to perk it up a little bit. And like you say, marry that with these guys that you have on your roster that should be coming right in, if not already arriving, into the prime of their career where they're going to play their best football. I love the signing at safety. Yes. I, you know, I love that, the signing of Thornhill. And you know, uh, Bo and Nathan, I love guys that have played in big games. It's like when you draft a kid a lot of times. That's why I think a lot of teams say, I like going to get them in the, out of the big programs, mm-hmm. you know, that played in big games because then the NFL doesn't really have them with their mouth wide open in awe because they've kind of gotten a taste of it. But, I mean, here's Thornhill. He's played in the biggest games, you know, during this run with Kansas City. And I really like that. I mean, you know, I think that's important, especially when, you know, you're getting, you're coming to a roster where, you know, there really isn't a lot of playoff experience with our guys. Hopefully that's going to change and it will become repetitive and annual, but we're not quite there yet. So I think adding a guy with his talent – but with his experience, he's just great. Yeah, I couldn't agree more in Thornhill. Three interceptions, career high last year. Obviously played in, in the Super Bowl. He's a two-time Super Bowl champ. He's played in three Super Bowls. He's played in two. His first year was on injured reserve. But nine postseason right. games that he personally has played and played 100% of the snaps on defense in their playoff run this year against the Jags, Cincinnati, and Philly. So a guy that three passes defensed in the playoffs this in the playoff run this year, tackle for loss. Yeah, he's got that experience, and he gives Jim Schwartz that center fielder. And I think that it helps right. him in so many ways. Number one, we're going to play more single high safety, <laughs> middle of the field close than we have under Joe Woods. But two, it also really eliminates kind of the confusion. We talked about it as being an asset, right? Mm-hmm. John and Grant could do so many similar things. But right. in reality, it's better to have – a center fielder, yep. and then let Grant be what he is, close to the ball, where he has exactly. can do so many things. And now I think that really frees Grant Delpit up. And I thought he finished the year very strongly and has a chance, I think, to take even a bigger step forward now with the addition of Thornhill. Yeah, because there was a period there, Nathan, where I think you're right. Um, there was a period last season where, you know, people were kind of going, hey, maybe the jury isn't out on Grant Delpit. Maybe it's in. And this is as good as it's going to get. And this isn't good enough. And then I think, you know, something clicked, uh, but he really started to play well at the end of the year. And I'm not just talking about 
interceptions, which sure. you know, he had the two against Washington. He had the one on Christmas Eve, and he was really all over the ball. But there were other things that he was doing. I mean, he was playing the run very well, um, and there weren't enough guys playing the run with him very well. But suddenly you could yeah. see, okay, all right, this is what we got now. This is where he should be on the field. And when he's there, he's going to be making plays. So, I, uh, I, you know, I really believe that Delpit is in a good, good spot. And with the addition of Thornhill, yeah, it will be a more – customary secondary with guys knowing what their job is and not trying to do everybody else's job and covering up things. Jim, we're talking about Thornhill, of course, and, and he had tweeted out to McColl Hardman, hey, why don't, you know, essentially, why don't you come join? And Hardman had tweeted back <laughs> with big eyes. And that does feel like kind of what we're waiting on now, right, is, is receiver. we need right. a receiver. You need a weapon. Uh, you need a receiver. Yeah. I, I'd love two of them, but for sure one of them. Um, is, is that kind of the last thing on the wish list for you two? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I oh, definitely. I mean, um, because you, I always felt as I watched them play last year offensively, they were at least a receiver short. Uh, Cooper gave them a phenomenal year, and Donovan Peoples Jones's arrow is definitely soaring up. Yep. Uh, and they're those, so those are two. But the um, you know because we kind of designate the team as as I mentioned a couple of moments ago that it's a now team ready to win. Um, I really think that, uh, you know, these other young receivers that they have who still probably fall into the folder of project um, and, you know, you just you needed more from them and they weren't able to do that at this particular point in their career. Now, maybe that's going to happen. Hopefully it does. I mean, really, hopefully it does for David Bell. Uh, And, you know, I think that they feel not only just because they drafted him, but I think that they see enough in him that they're saying, listen, he should take a step up this year. But you need something. You have to give Watson another receiver that really understands the game right now because, you know, the, it's fine to be bringing people along, but it's so hard to win in the NFL. You need everybody that knows how to do it. And I think everybody would feel a lot better if you have another receiver out there that really knows how to do it. And David Bell, I, we know how productive he was in college. And, yes, I think that we all hope that he develops in year two. But <laughs> – I think we're talking about a guy that is dangerous, a guy that the other team respects his ability to run past them. And I'd even go back to one play against Pittsburgh in the season finale. Uh, We hit Deshaun hit Amari Cooper for a huge crosser that got us down near the goal line. I think we ultimately end up scoring on the drive to Najoku, but it was Jalen Darden who kind of cleared everything out at the post. And you could see the two Steelers say, oh, my God, this guy's right. actually fast. They turn and run, and now you create <laughs> space. That space creator. And, and Darden showed that he could do it on some level, but, you know, he didn't wasn't able to stick with Tampa. I don't think you can count on him per se, but we need somebody that can do that. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. No doubt about it. <clears throat> and I remember that play well, and I remember you pointing it out. Um, and then when you look at it, you could see that the Steelers really had to open up and commit and cover him. And then it it just opened the field up for for Deshaun Watson. So there's no doubt about it, um, you know, that the possibilities are there for them uh, to do a lot of great things if they can get that kind of a receiver. And I'm sure that's what they're working on because they have really meticulously gone down the list of needs. And I don't know if people didn't feel uh, they were doing it quick enough on the first day. It's the most importantly to – to just get it done mm-hmm. and, and get it done the right way. Never mind that there's no extra points for the speed that you get these guys signed at. So, yeah, I mean, I think they've gone down the list of what they've needed and, uh, you know, meticulously are going about their business. And I would think wide receiver right now is, is next on the list. A very, very important piece to it. But certainly to get that defense fixed was uh, really a priority number one, I think. Jim, um I, I, I love your opinions on almost on, on anything, quite frankly. And so I wanted to get your uh, your view of the Rogers thing yes, from yesterday. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we were watching in just amazement <laughs> because it was almost covered as if he was a free agent. And it's like, wait a second, the Packers. Yeah, he's still a Packer. What did you make of that <laughs> scene yesterday? Well, the whole scene, you know, Bo, that that whole relationship with Pat McAfee has been amazing. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm not underselling Pat McAfee at all, but I mean, his connection with Aaron Rodgers um, through these years now has really kind of put that show on the map. I mean, it's, it's a must go to, right. Uh, You know, it's like, uh, it was like Larry King 
when he had his interview show on CNN, <laughs> and all of a sudden this guy, this billionaire Ross Perot is going to run is going to yeah. run for president as this third party. And the go-to guy, Ross Perot, made the go-to guy Larry King. Mm-hmm. And if you really wanted to know about Ross Perot, uh, you had to watch the Larry King show. So if you really want to know about Aaron Rodgers, you you have to go to Pat McAfee. Um, it's amazing how much attention he continues to uh, gather and demand uh, for what he's going to do. And it's really every year now. I mean, mm-hmm. is he going to play? Where is he going to play? Uh, I, it's, it's unbelievable that, that a guy like that – can command that it will be interesting not if but probably when this deal is done and i know a lot of people are bringing this side of the topic up how is he going to handle the new york Ooh. coverage of things that new york <laughs> media which will be vastly different from green bay you know it really is i mean 18 kind of cozy years in green bay i mean every movie makes everything he does is going to be under a huge microscope and on the back pages of the New York Post and all of the papers back there, all the tabloids back there in New York. But it was really, it's it's really entertaining, I think, when you're not involved, you know, <laughs> to be an audience member and watch what's going on there. Were you shocked at, and it was something that we said immediately, and you, you alluded to in the open, yeah. just that he still needs the Packers to agree to some form of compensation right. with the Jets – and now you've got all the Jets fans worked up into a frenzy. You've got the Jets social media account tweeting out stuff about Aaron Rodgers and how excited they are for him to come be a Jet. And the Packers have all the leverage as far as I see it. And it didn't take him. Bo and I were talking. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't until last night people realized, like, hey, maybe he just helped the Packers out inadvertently with his little tirade there. And they are under no <laughs> obligation to trade him. And they can basically ask for whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah, and they can really, you know, go into the old North Carolina four corners and kind of yeah. stall it, right? I mean, they can really kind of tie things up, you know, uh, by just hanging on and hanging on for whatever the deal is going to be, you know, in a very small way now, much different. It was kind of like the Baker Mayfield situation last year where it was obvious that the Browns were probably going to move him, but what kind of marketability did he have? Far different from Aaron Rodgers, as I just pointed out. But, you know, the timetable of it kept going deeper and deeper and closer and closer to camp and mini camp. And beyond that, was he going to be ready for training camp? Now, I don't think this is going to go that far at all, but you're right. The price of it is, is going up when this guy is saying, hey, listen, um, I'm very excited about being a Jet and playing for the Jets and going to New York and playing there. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, These are the guys I want the Jets to go get to come and join me. Um, It's Talk about putting the cart before the horse, really. It's it's been amazing to watch. It's quite a story. It really has. Jim, we'll get you out of here on this one. Uh, Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Happy St. Patrick's Day to you, my friend. Do you have a – Thank you, Bo. Thank you. Do do you have a favorite uh, tradition uh, that that you could share? What are are things that you do every year on St. Patrick's Day? Great question. Well, I I have to tell you, we go to the basics, and we have the huge – as we used to call it back in Boston, and I don't know if they call it here, but we have the huge boiled dinner. We have the corned beef, cabbage, uh, potatoes, carrots, uh, you know – Mustard, if you want it, yep. uh, bread, if you want to make the corned beef into a sandwich, uh, you know that's that's what we do. My wife does. My wife Cheryl does an amazing job with that. Not uh, not a gene of Irish in her, but she has learned well. <laughs> so it's a great day, and I really look forward to it. And not only is that day good, but the the leftovers bow off of oh, that sure. meal are are exceptional the next day Delightful. which normally is a recovery day as we all know it certainly yes. would be is it is there is is it possible <laughs> as you know i'm a fan of the whiskey is it possible that a jameson a bushmills uh a red yeah, breast, a red where breast. are we going there yeah a little red breast sure i have not ever had that i you know i i definitely the jameson definitely yep. the bushmills uh love it no right. doubt about it right. love it love it i'm i'm gonna pour a couple Looking fingers of to. one tomorrow in your honor sir uh thank you for your time <laughs> as always you. Thank you, David. Have a great one. Happy St. Patrick's Day, guys, and the rest of free agency. Thanks, Uh, Jim. Enjoy.
That's a, it's not a single you, time we have him on that I'm not like, it's the best. Pure joy. It's the best. Pure having the joy. Voice on. Yep. Uh, Dalvin Tomlinson will join us uh, sometime between now and the end of the program. That's right. Uh, we hope we're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily. You are rather brought to you by Ballybet coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
We're going to Cleveland Browns Daily brought to you by Ballybet coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN. Cleveland joined in studio, our privilege by our new defensive tackle, Dalvin Tomlinson, joining us here in studio. And I can give you a scouting report, big man. <laughs> we need you, buddy. Big Welcome. man. That's right. Welcome. Get off the bus, guy. Welcome to That's town. Right. This is so exciting for us. It was a, a position of need, obviously, at the very, very highest priority. Uh, you were on a wish list that was very short. How did this marriage come about, and how excited are you to be here? Uh, it came about, you know, uh, I heard, like, as soon as free agency started, Cleveland was the first team they called. Uh, as soon as they were available to call, they called. And um, just – with the scheme and everything, I saw everybody and the players and everything. I just felt like it was the perfect mix together, and I just felt like it was the right place for me. So you've obviously you've played against the Browns a few times as a member of the uh, the Vikings and the Giants. Had a sack against us with the Vikings back in week four uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago. So that's mm-hmm. some we file away. The other uh, defensive lineman, I'm calling him Double O, the Giants, also had a sack against the Browns last year. Mm-hmm. Um, when you know you have a game like that, or you say you do something, did they do they bring that up? They're like, oh yeah, you really stood out against us, <laughs> and so and you know we've got a good interior of our mm-hmm. offensive line, so mm-hmm. it's uh, a sack against us from the interior is a sack of great consequence. Oh yeah, you know uh, it really doesn't come up that much like that, yeah. but um, I think they like mention it here and there, maybe here and yeah. there. <laughs> you know, it's um it's it's something when when stars kind of align, and and for us, I think that it feels like it does with with you signing here. Um, you, you think about what Jim Schwartz wants to do and what he requires out of the defensive tackle position. Mm-hmm. It seems like it fits your game perfectly. Um, we already have a, a guy named Miles Garrett, who I'm sure you're familiar with on that defensive line. And so you needed somebody who could do that on the interior. Um, when, when you're going through free agency, you know, to, you mentioned the Browns were the first to call and you're trying to find the perfect fit. Um, where were those check box boxes to check in terms of scheme with Schwartz playing with somebody like Miles? Uh, I feel like uh, those is very high priority on the checkbox list and um like I, like you said this attacking and you know being big and powerful too using that all together is going to cause a lot of havoc this year yeah when you know and in minnesota you had zadarius smith on one side daniel mm-hmm. hunter on the other when you can push the pocket mm-hmm. now it may not show up on your stat sheet right you mm-hmm. have gotten your sacks every year a couple two and a half three and a half mm-hmm. you contribute to a lot of those sacks because if a quarterback can't step up Mm-hmm. Those guys coming around the edge can get there. Is that something that you take a lot of pride in? And you know that, hey, if I can push this pocket, Miles Garrett is going to get there. Most definitely, because uh, I, I feel like I'm a very selfless player. And as uh, long as my – if I do good, if I get the sack, that's fun. But also if my teammates get the sack, I feel like I got the sack too. Hey, you gonna, you get gonna, rewarded uh, handsomely for exactly. that, by the way. So congratulations <laughs> on that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So it's just like as uh, long as he gets the sack, I'm going to celebrate like I got the sack with him. So it's just like – we're going to go out there and have some fun with it. And you've been accustomed to this. I mean, you, you think back to Alabama uh, with the Giants. Like, you've always played um, amongst great players and, and great defensive lines. Is, is there a common thread that, that those groups had that maybe can apply here? Oh, yeah, as long as you uh, – just a lot of players that actually you just want to be great. If everybody wants to be great and everybody wants to play for it, not just themselves but each other, it's like the sky's the limit. I mean, you think about that line at Alabama, Jonathan Allen, Jaron Reed, Ashawn Robinson, and you. Like, that is – that's insane. <laughs> it's the Bama way. Well, it yeah. is the Bama way. But were you does that does that almost kind of spoil you when you come into the NFL? Because I would imagine it, it probably felt pretty easy for the four of you to do what you wanted to do to offensive lines in college. Most definitely. And um, just like even that year, there was one year, the next year it was me, Jonathan Allen, and Deron Payne. So it was just like <laughs> every year you're like, I don't got to worry about that. So I, I know they got it. <laughs> Yeah, and then you gotta think about the years. Also, we had like C.J. Mosley, Reuben Foster, and all those great Reggie Ragland, all yeah. those great linebackers behind you. It's just like they're not gonna run the ball up here. They gotta go <laughs> elite side on the side on the throw the ball. Like you gotta take your chances. Yeah. How does that? I can't imagine. I mean, they probably know the probably rhetorical question, but the way that that prepares you though mm-hmm. for the league because there's a standard uh, with Saban's defenses that have been there forever, mm-hmm. um, and. You know, it's college football, but it's professional sports. You're playing for Alabama, man. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no way, other way around it. Does that make the transition to the NFL for you? Does that make it easier? Yeah, most definitely. Just like you said, the way Coach Saban has a standard, he expects the best out of you every single play. And when you get to the league, that's the same exact standard you got to uphold to. So it just it makes you that much more prepared for it. So when you actually get here, it's not a, a surprise to you. 
Have you already heard from the linebackers? Because we talked about you can help a guy like mm-hmm. Miles, but you're a linebacker's best friend too, right? You can yeah. help keep them clean, let them flow to the ball. When mm-hmm. you're penetrating, you're disrupting things in the backfield, or sometimes you're eating up two guys so mm-hmm. they can run around. Or th- I'm sure they were as excited as anybody. It, it's, I'll tell you this. I don't know the last time we had a 320-pounder on this roster. It's been a long time. We brought Andrew <laughs> Billings in one year, but COVID, yeah. he, he, was, he opted out that season. So mm-hmm. that's a – I mean – You've made a lot of people happy coming here. Yeah. <laughs> the linebackers love Yeah, it. most definitely. I feel like every linebacker I played in front of, I, I think we've been, like, super close friends. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're taking care of you. Right? Most they're definitely. Like, Thank you. You help us rack up those stats. We were – before you came on, we were you know, having a conversation off air about your the life you've lived and, and the mm-hmm. experiences that you've had. And I know we'll get into some of that in a second. But um, I, th- I think of some of our young guys, and um, and we're just now getting to know you right now, but you, you come across as a very natural leader. Mm-hmm. Um, how much of that are you comfortable with? Uh, we've got some young guys on that D front that, that certainly need to be helped along along the way. Uh, how comfortable you are, are you in that role? Yeah, I'm super comfortable in that role. Just like, um, yeah, like you said, I just, I just feel like it's natural. Um, I always want to help people outside of myself as well because um, if I'm helping other people get better and I'm also focusing on me getting better too, we're just going to be a better team. So I'm so used to it and, um, yeah, I just want to help everybody I possibly can. Bo alluded to it, 4.4 GPA, you go, got into Harvard, football <laughs> stole your heart, as you said earlier today. You go to Alabama, state wrestling champion, the Renaissance band with the instruments, but I don't know how many people know you've – overcome tremendous tragedy Mm -hmm. and I'm certainly very sorry for your losses and I can't imagine what that was like to go through but how has that shaped you and to look back at all you've been able to accomplish under what I would call incredible Mm -hmm. duress is it's Mm -hmm. just a real testament to you and and everybody who it takes a village they say right who came around you to support you as a young man Mm -hmm. yeah like you know I guess you could give shout out my family and my fiance they was always with me since day one and um yeah, it, it was tough. It wasn't an easy journey. Uh, it was a lot of times I questioned, like, why me? And um, also, like, uh, I just remember my mom. Like, she's my why, no matter what. Mm-hmm. She's the reason I wanted to play football in the first place because our first year of playing was four years old, and I remember how excited she was to see my brother and my older cousin play. And um, so every time I get on the football field, I always look into the sideline and see her smile type thing. And uh, that was all the way through high school until I lost her. And then uh, I just – even after that, like, I – play for her. I, I mm-hmm. honor her, her every time I put my hand in the dirt and go and hit somebody. And um, yeah, I have a huge football family. Everybody loves football. And um, yeah, I just, I feel like all the women in my family are the biggest football fans. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have that support though, that's allowed you to do that. And you obviously have tremendous inner strength as well to kind of overcome that. And mm-hmm. you know, it's funny, you were talking about some of the young guys and yeah. being a leader, you know, people oh, complain, oh, my car is this or that. Mm-hmm. You're like, listen, I've gone through some unfathomable stuff Mm -hmm. and I'm here and I figured out how to do it like you can figure this out right I think that would be a it's a powerful thing to be able to say to somebody your life is powerful Mm -hmm. and what you've accomplished so congratulations to you on that again force you to be a man (laughs) at at a very young young, you got to be a man at a young age and Mm -hmm. I mean we looked at some of the stuff that you it's incredible what you've done like you've taken a lot in your life and I I imagine you get into a room and you're you're everybody's a pro and everybody's the best at what they've done and life experience goes a long way. So we had a guy on from Minnesota this week who Loved could you. not Raved stop praising you yeah. in terms of what you are in the locker room, in terms of what you are as a player. Um, you can feel it. Like, it's really important to you, the way mm-hmm. you carry yourself, the way that you handle your business. And, and some of that comes, I'm sure, from having to grow up at a very young age and deal mm-hmm. with some really hard stuff early. Most definitely. I agree with that. Yeah. And it's been one thing that is consistent. Anybody that we've ever had in here, whether it's somebody with the Browns, like a Joel Batonio or Christian Kirksey at the time, or somebody we brought in, like we brought Jacoby Brissett last year. Mm-hmm. If you are a Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for your team, you are a different you're a different breed, and it, it, it mm-hmm. passes through. What did that mean to you when you got that no- distinction from the Giants in 2020? Oh yeah, it meant a lot. Uh, it was it was a big deal for me, just because even w- with that year with so much going on, we were still reaching out to people and organizations in like uh, the New York area at the time. And uh, it used to be the Far Far Rockaway Colts. I remember the organization. It was like (laughs) in a bad part of New York, but it was kids uh, playing football. And uh, pretty much it was police officers. They were their coaches. Uh And they used to get off duty and they come coach the kids and everything. And uh, I remember we did so much with them and they changed their name to the Far Rockaway Giants. And, um, yeah, I love working with that group. That was an amazing group of kids and uh, just the officers, too, as well. We used to be on Zoom calls because it was a COVID year sure. and stuff. 
and we had they they still accomplish great things now that we started doing so much that year with with that one program and then Kate's Club and Good Grief and Brighter Days all different organizations that help kids with uh, the grieving process because everybody grieves differently and um, I wish I would have had something like that when I was going through my grieving process but to uh, to see a kid even younger than me lose a parent and um, going through that process and uh, just to be able to go back and talk to kids or be on a Zoom call with those kids or have them come to a game and talk to them and let them see that you can still be successful and be anything you or your parent wants you to be. And uh, just because you lost them, you have to continue to live the way they would want you to live. And um, you just to talk to them, you never know who life you will change by just having a simple conversation and smiling. Yeah, it's powerful yeah. stuff, man. It certainly uh, is. I'm going to tell you, the, uh, we, we say this to a lot of the SEC guys that come through here. Um, you know, obviously, you're new to town and new to the fan base and everything that comes with that and the organization. Uh, you played at great organizations. You think about the Giants and the Vikings, obviously. Um, what a stadium. Th- this, yeah, I love that stadium. This, uh, <laughs> this, this franchise and this fan base, I think, is most similar to probably what you experienced at Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that a football Saturday in Tuscaloosa felt, that's what a football Sunday will feel down there on the lake. What do you know about the fan base? What do you know about the passion that, that this city has for this team? Uh, what have you learned since signing? I heard uh, they're super passionate. I can't yes. wait. I'm so excited for game day. I can look at this picture right now and just know how it's crazy it's going to get and super excited for it. And I'm just, just learning, like, the culture of the fans, no matter what it is, uh, how the season's going. If it's a, a great season or not the season that you want it to be, they're supporting you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's, yes. uh, that's, that's amazing to hear with that fan base. Uh, just uh, hats off to them just because, like, those are true fans. You'll see. You won't be able to go anywhere in town. Like, it'll just be it, – the fans, they love this football team. They're so desperate and hungry for a winner. Yeah. And, you know, you're a piece that can come and help bring that. You're a guy who understands mm-hmm. winning. You've done it uh, your whole career. Wanted to ask you just more of a fun question. I know you're an avid video gamer. Yeah. What's your uh, – what are your games of choice? Oof. You know, I don't discriminate with video games either. It's just like <laughs> Are you a Madden guy? Uh, I set for Madden. Because Madden is like, uh, it's it's not realistic to me. Okay. Because just so you know that they just dropped a, you just got a 98 in the free agent thing, which is in the ultimate team. Like you are as high as it gets. It right might now. be realistic to me. Now. There we go. <laughs> See? There we go. Exactly. They but, got that one thing right. They, but, um, they got one thing right. Yeah. Like uh, I play Madden just like casually with sure. friends and stuff, but sure. I play most like Call of Duty, Battlefield, okay. like God of War franchise uh-huh. and stuff like that. Like I play a little bit of everything, but. Any game, I get, I'm wish, I'm willing to give it a try. It's a good, it's a great escape. I still, I'm a grown man. I'm a man in my 40s. I still love a great video game. I yeah. love it. It's it's just fun. Yeah. Stay in the the things you like to play. Nine instruments. Nine. Nine. Can it's you outrageous. Name, can you name all nine? And, and and this is from the internet, so it must be true. And which from one's f- your which one's your favorite? I don't know about nine. That's, 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 that's a, that's a, a little exaggeration. That's a, that's a reach. I don't know. Okay. About nine. What, what, what <laughs> you do play? What what instruments do you like to play the most? Uh, I, what played, do you enjoy? I started off playing trumpet, and then I went to percussion instruments like a xylophone, a little bit of piano, uh, the snare Tickle drum, ivories. bass drum, field drum, stuff like that's what's six six. six? Yeah, okay. we're at six. And yeah, that was pretty much the main ones. Do you sing? No, I can't say. Okay. I, was I, get, say I was just going to throw uh, a voice in there. We could count that as a seven. Right. I got a seven-year-old who got a drum set. Any interest I can get you give some lessons to this kid? Because all of this is noise <laughs> to me right now, man. <laughs> hey, man, he might, he might just be a genius. He might know. be. You never might know. Maybe go to Harvard. Maybe accept like Harvard just like <laughs> you. Hey, man, welcome to town. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Great it's privilege great. to have you on here. I think you're going to fit in great. Uh, it's going to be a real thrill. Go ahead real quick. This is one that I always like to end on when we first get to talk to somebody. Is what is something you want Browns fans to know about Dalvin Tomlinson? Oof. Something, uh, I would say that y'all have a true dog on the football field now. <laughs> on like the inside. It. You and Perrion are going to have a lot of fun together. You're going <laughs> to help wrangle him in there. Very talented. Also a dog. Tremendous wrestling promos as well. So we have uh, one thing that Cleveland has a very uh, nimble market for is making T-shirts. I think that could be the T-shirt by this afternoon. You, there's no doubt. I think, I think <laughs> that'll The big happen. dog. Absolutely. Big dog. That's right. Dalvin, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to yeah. town. Dalvin Thompson, your new defensive tackle, joining us here in studio. So much more to come. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by BallyBet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Here on your Cleveland Browns with the help of your favorite four-legged companion, Barking Backers, presented by Milkbone, the Browns' newest club for pet parents worldwide. Sign up today at BarkingBackers.com. Barking Backers, the fan club for dogs. God bless that dude, man. That I like. That was fun. He's good. That's eats exactly what uh, what the doctor ordered here. It man. was it, it it was fun. It was emotional, and it, it he's a powerful guy. Powerful on the I field. Like him. Powerful off the field. Yep. Um, as I as I said, when you find the guys that have been nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year, they are they are all cut from a very similar and very special cloth. And, and I think that that is uh, very true of Dalvin Tomlinson. And you know. I can't wait to see this guy on the field. Uh, I think he's obviously going to bring a lot to this locker room. I think he's going to bring a lot as well to uh, this community. And I think he's going to bring a lot to this football team on the field. And so I think that's one of the things they're looking for with that signing. Um, and I think that, you know, you got to feel pretty excited about what they've got there. And I loved his mentality, which is as long as somebody's getting the sack, I get the sack. I feel like I got the sack because what he does is not necessarily going to show up. There are defensive tackles out there who will get 10 sacks. Yeah. He knows how to generate pressure. He had the 11th best pass rush grade among all defensive tackles in the league last year. But if he can push that pocket and you have a speed guy, 007 on one side, Miles Garrett on the other, there is going to be nowhere for quarterbacks to go. Well, it's also, I mean, he's a three down guy. You know, he's like there was, the notion that, that there he's was not some of that going around that he wasn't well, earlier in the week, and it was just nonsense. Like, no, it's he's, ridiculous. He's, he's a three down guy. Yeah. Is, is what he is. So he's, um, and I, I think, boy, you know, and the other thing, him, him and Perry on there's that there's a chance that there he could be, could be, could be a, really good, a wonderful mentor type figure for Perry on Winfrey because Perry on is uniquely and supremely talented, and I think that you know, kind of the point I was trying to make when when we were talking to him is that. There are a lot of people that can complain about a variety of things, yeah. right, in their lives. They're just going to seem pretty insignificant compared to what Dalvin Tomlinson has endured, losing his, his father at the age of five, losing his mother while he was in high school, yeah. and he is still here today, and he is yeah. a Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee. He is someone who went out and achieved. It would have been so easy to shut it down after that and be like, yeah, this isn't fair to he me. Use it the other way. Use it as yes. a guiding light. And that's a powerful thing. Yeah, it is. It's a uh, powerful thing. A couple of uh, – the NCAA tournament is uh, is up and running and operational. We have our first result, Maryland over West Virginia, 67-65 to 65 on that one. The very early games are just winding down. Uh, Virginia up four really, really late, 12 seconds left against Furman. Uh, Missouri with a halftime lead of four over Utah State. Kansas up nine right now, the one sixteen game against Howard uh, on that front as well. Did you fill out a bracket? I did. Bracket I it did. Up. Yeah. yeah. For, you know, we are not allowed for to fun, do any. For fun, of course. For Just for fun. Pure fun. Yes. Just for pure fun, fun for the kids. Yeah. Pure um, fun. I've got, I think, an Arizona-Kansas final. What was your, what was the most heartbreaking Arizona team for you? Because they've had several that were really, really good that didn't do it. They had the one who did, which what most people in retrospect wouldn't look back at the Arizona runner loot and go, that was the best team. It no, looks it like it retrospectively, but they had a lot of big time squads. I think the year that we lost to, um, there's year we lost to uh, Corliss Williamson and Scotty Thurman. Would have been 94. Was That was a really good team. Yep. Um, when we were the two and we lost to Steve Nash as a 15, Ugh, that was rough. That one well, yeah. That was rough. Um, the, Sean the Sean Elliott, Elliott team. Elliott and Steve Kerr, yeah, those teams. That team was unbelievable. He was National Player of the Year. What year was that? 90? I want to say like not – I want to say more like 80s, 89-ish, That's 90. where my, my Dickie V, Arizona's number one baby t-shirt was from that era, which is one of my favorite t-shirts that I ever had as a, yeah. as a human. The team that lost to the great UNLV team with Kenny Lofton was yeah. loaded, and they had a, that team had a chance. I mean, they've had a lot of teams of consequence. I also thought that the team that lost to, I want to say it was Duke, wasn't that in the final? Was that the finals that they lost to Duke in yeah, like the- 2001, 2002? Yeah, when they had Jason been like, Gardner, Gilbert Arenas, Lauren Woods, mm-hmm. and then Dunley. Was Stoudemire beat. on that team, or was he? No, he, he was, was already gone. Yeah, earlier. Yeah, Stoudemire and Khalid Reeves were. Oh, that's right. That's, that's who lost to saying. Arkansas. I want to think. I want to say could have been those guys then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stoudemire. A lot of squads. He was great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Khalid yeah, Reeves was, was awesome. That's the beautiful thing of March, though. Is I mean, Buckeye fans would have a similar bunch of griefs, not quite as many as that, but there would be. Uh, that's the beauty of it is that it is not the. It's not the perfect way to crown a champion, but it's the most fun. It to is crown a champion. for sure the yeah. most fun. Yeah. And it you're is not going to get the best team all the time. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So much more to come. I think, I believe, based on Twitter, Furman just did something. If they, maybe they took down Virginia. 
Well, they were down. Oh, my God, they did. They were down four with 12 seconds left, and now they're up one with two. Oh, my. That's unbelievable. Oh, oh my. How, does you, how do you collapse? Like, that's crazy. Well, you have the, well, figure it all out. Um, all right, listen to Cleveland Browns Daily, brought to you by Bally Bet, coming soon to Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland. what happened in the Furman game. Virginia is up four with 12 seconds. Okay. Okay. Furman hits a bucket to make it a two-point Virginia lead. Virginia's inbounding the ball underneath their own. They inbound it uh, kind of to the short corner inexplicably. Yeah. Well, if you are, you have two choices. If you're going to inbound the ball there, you, the ball either has to go right back to where it came from or it's got to be passed Correct. quickly, or yes. you got to dribble bat out of hell and break through before they trap you. He does the opposite. He, he retreats the into corner. the corner and then picks up the ball. Right. Now, from that standpoint, instead of doing literally anything else, I mean, the only thing he could have done worse is to like pass it directly to a guy at the three-point stripe. He just throws it. Like he, I think what he's trying to do is just throw it as far as he can to the take other end of the court time. to take sure. it as much time as he can. It's a legendary Magic Johnson play from the Western Conference Finals against Portland where he just threw it up in the air and the clock ran out. Yep. But there's eight seconds is the problem. The second problem is he doesn't throw it far enough. So he literally throws it to the guy at Furman at midcourt who catches it, throws it to the guy at the three-point line who drills one a minute, three. One minute, one minute. Oddly, there's still two seconds left on the clock. So Virginia ends up losing this game, but there's still – there was so much time when he did all of this that Virginia still had an opportunity to try to get a shot up. 
Uh, but it's Furman winning 68 to 67. So your first big seed over a high seed uh, is gone. But Furman, the 13th seed over Virginia. Maryland advanced as well. There it is. That's you love it. possible. That can't happen. Did they Just not can't. have a timeout? Did, did, I don't did know Virginia not have a timeout for the guy in the, in the short corner? Yeah, you can't dribble. I mean, like you t- tell kids when they're seven. 30, 30. You don't dribble backwards. You cert- <laughs> into a, You don't dribble backwards into a corner. Then you definitely don't just pick up your dribble. I got a great tweet. I look forward to it. Uh, enjoy your Thursday, everybody. We're back tomorrow.